Hello everybody and welcome back. So, after a nice meal and rejuvenating drink, we are back and uh, we are, I'd say, on the last stretch of the most general stuff that we gotta cover tonight. Uh, boop. Alright, so, where are we at as of right now? <clears throat> Where are we at? Okay, so we've got the basic things. What the fuck? No, it is my mouse. Yeah, it's your mouse. Oh, I think it's the um. It's the function key on my mouse that's the that enables the scrolling, considering there's no middle mouse button on this. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, so I kind of just have to do that. Anyways, <clears throat> the one thing that I actually want to do is I want to make sure that when the window opens up, or when the window has an open, uh, open drape, the light is actually shining through the darkness on this one as well kind of an important uh it's it's more of an atmospheric thing but it would sort of make sense if there was just a little bit of moonlight uh in the lighting so considering that our windows are <clears throat> separate objects uh we can go into the lighting we can go into the lighting and do all the bullshit. So here's the part where we use the draw blending mode to um, subtract the player's candle. So we can just go ahead and continue this stuff here. So with OBJ, um, not lighting, but it's OBJ decor window. Um, so this is where this is where we actually have to. Um, once again, refer to the random window variables that we had there. See, if this was Game Maker 2.0, I could just start typing stuff up, and uh, it would just bring up the variables from that object. Ah, there's so many improvements. Um, okay, who knows? Maybe, uh, maybe with the money from the graphics card you get from me, I can. Uh, you can get yourself Game Maker Studio too. Or a new graphics card. Or Game Maker Studio 2. <laughs> you could always keep the graphics card, considering if you're going to be doing yeah, the multiplayer. So it's of the same quality of what I have right now. So. Mm. Really no, what I mean is if you need to build a second PC, if you're doing like multiplayer stuff, oh. that's, that's what I'm doing with this PC. It's mm. probably never going to be built. Um, <clears throat> okay, so decor window so we use mm -hmm. so right drape so left underscore drape and right underscore drape <coughs> so if it's true it's open so uh, if left underscore drape drape equals true do some bullshit and if right underscore drape equals true also, do some bullshit. Now, sprite light candle. So I'm going to create a new group here. So this is lighting. Drop this bullshit in there. Um, SPR light window. Uh, I, or lighting. I do have a sprite specifically designed for the, <clears throat> for the window. I don't know where it is. Window light, right there. Let's drop this son of a bitch in here. <clears throat> here we go. And it's not there. Come on. Oh, well, fuck you too. <laughs> um, let's go ahead and crop. And I'll position the thing somewhere over there. Uh, okay. What I'm gonna do now is 
uh, this is for the left drape, so left. The sprite over there is for the right drape, so we're gonna say draw sprite SBR uh, light window. Uh, obviously, there's no animation there. Uh, we're gonna actually have to extend the sprite. <clears throat> So we're gonna do for now x, y, uh, x scale of three, y scale of three, uh, rotation of zero, c white for color, and alpha of one. So now, if we are going to get, at some point, a window that's open on the right side, we should see the lighting being subtracted from there okay so come on you here we go so now we just gotta catch this thing in the act it's actually gonna be easier if i just position the damn thing in the room at the same place where the player spawns Go. Put that over there. I'm gonna move this some bitch over here. All right. <clears throat> Compile time. I like how my student is paying attention. <laughs> paying many things. Currently, a drug dealer. Good. Is that going on YouTube? You are. Yes, of course it is. Okay. So here we go. Check this out. So we've got the light. But as you can see, the light is permanently sitting in the same position. So yeah, we, it's moving around. So we also have to subtract the X, view X and view Y from the uh, from the light sprite. Light sprite, so X. X minus view x view and y minus view y view <clears throat> so now that we've subtracted it it should stay in one place all that we have to do after that is just slightly move it around to make sure that it fits there's also penalty in the game if you run around your candle will go out faster okay so here's okay so now that we have this the only thing that I have to do is move it down a little bit because it is uh, a little too high. So why what I can do is probably I think down and to the left a little bit. So x eighteen. Um, let's do x twenty. Uh, so right now I could. Um, I could fix the positioning via code, or I could just move around the center of pivot, you know, the anchor point um, in the sprite. The only problem is, is every time you change the anchor point on the sprite, it has to recompile that sprite. Okay. So when you have a giant game, you change one sprite, you load one sprite, and it's going to end up, you know, having to recompile the entire thing. As you can see, I moved it a little too much so instead of doing that now I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, <coughs> subtract let's go like 15 15 pixels from the Y <laughs> here we go okay not bad not bad. So there's just a tiny bit. So I can see where there's a line over there, uh, right on the light. I know that uh, there's supposed to be way more of this thing. So I need to move it maybe five pixels up. So minus twenty. Considering we are working with pixel <coughs> art, this is like a pixel perfect job. So hot glue on my keyboard. Here we go. Okay, so you can you can also see the uh, just like two, Honestly, four I don't pixels. Even notice it. 
No, these these like four pixels over oh, there okay. are not aligned, and I need to move it over just a little bit. Uh, so I'd say 24. Probably gonna be like 26. Uh, and I need to move it over like X plus two. I could have simply made the lighting inside of the um, inside of the window frame, but the lighting sprite is a little bit bigger than the. Okay, here we go. So move over Y one and X one. Um, the thing is, the light sprite is in dimensions is bigger than the actual window. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Beautiful. So now the actual light sprite is sitting perfectly where it's supposed to sit when the window is open. Now, all I have to do is copy this, duplicate it. I need to invert the x-axis and I'm gonna have to shift the thing over uh, a little bit for the left window. The y-axis should stay the same, it's the x-axis I just gotta adjust. Do 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 do. There we go. Oh wow. Almost. Uh, I'd say f six pixels. So minus four. Got a little too far. Do 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 do. Maybe I should uh, actually make another episode for the um, Nomads Tech Journal, talking about how to upgrade your your webcam with a wide angle lens. That'd be cool. Yeah. All right. So uh, I'd say yeah, pretty good. Like if you're walking around, you can see this stuff. Maybe just move it down one thing. I kind of want to say I gotta move it down a little bit. I don't know. To me, to the to the eyes of an amateur, this looks great. All right, whatever you say. The only thing is, uh, the light over there is right on top of the player. Your foot, yeah. So you yeah. just gotta play with the depth. Well, not the depth. You're gonna have to. You're gonna have to do something like with double surfaces, where the uh, the light of the window would on would be cut out with the silhouette of the player. The only problem is you see how right now I'm moving my head up and down, so you can see the slopes of the pixels. Mm -hmm. The problem, well, at least the problem that I had when I was working with this really small uh, resolution, like 300 by 120 pixels, and just stretched the entire application window is that my surface was extremely pixelated, which had an interesting effect to it. Um, but uh, the since, you know, pixels cannot be sloped, right? Uh, the surfaces are pure pixels. So if this is a stretched sprite, it would in the surface, it would have to be converted to just pixel art, right? Which means that there would be no sloped pixels. So... I would end up having edges of pixels of the mask sticking outside of the um, sticking outside of the uh, the head. So I mean, for now, this is kind of all right. Um, I may have to do something uh, something about this. So, anyways, uh, now that we have this thing completed, we can do what do we have left? I mean, the NPCs, that stuff will the AI. Yeah, well, there's That's... not there's not too much AI, but uh, I st I still have to kind of redesign the NPCs, so to speak. Uh, Cause I mean, there's got to be like hostile NPCs and there's got to be jump scare NPCs. Uh, we can try. We can try to do the um, interface, or the uh, well, you know, inventory. So that when we interact with this stuff, it pulls up the inventory, right? Sure. Okay. 
so um, since we can have at least a little bit of random generation uh, in this game uh, some of the cabinets may have uh, candles in them right now should I proceed with the same method I had in the first game where I had uh, the candles just drop on the floor and you pick them up or should uh, opening the drawer open the interface or inventory for the drawer and your inventory and you would just you know pick stuff up by clicking on it in there I don't have mirror test let's see if I can uh, let's see if I can just run this project considering I have two game maker versions when I bought the game maker originally it came with a steam version and the standalone version so the steam version you can just run you know the game um, separately so if I can actually run steam oh and it's updating of course oh you actually have to buy separate versions no you don't when you buy the standalone version of Game Maker Studio you One, get you get the Steam version bundled with it. Very handy stuff. You bought the Steam version off of Humble Bundle, right? I don't know what I bought, but yeah, it was off Humble Bundle. I it is on Steam, so. So I'm you got assuming. the Steam version. I'm assuming. So. Yeah. So I got the the nice thing about this is that it, you can like run the Steam version on one computer and standalone on another. Actually, I think it was the standalone, but it did not come with a Steam key. It I did have, not come with the Steam key? No, but I also have the Steam uh, version, but that was, like, way back. Well, way. that's, like, the free version. Yeah, the free uh, version. You may... Did you, like, already activate the Steam the key? I activated all the keys, the HTML, HTML and all that stuff. And that was the standalone, right? The standalone. I mean, technically, maybe if you went to... Uh, maybe if you went to, like, your account at YoYo Games, maybe you can uh, access the... Uh, the you can like retrieve your uh, Steam keys, or there's an option to retrieve your license keys, which will send you an email with the license keys that you've activated under your account. So perhaps there you would be able to activate the um, or see if there's like a tab that says Steam key blah blah blah. Right? I'm honestly fine with having a standalone. I don't really need yeah, that's Steam fine. Well, I mean, in my case, I'm running two separate versions of of uh, the Game Maker, one on this computer, one on the other computer, right. specifically for multiplayer, is kind of a uh, kind of useful. Anyways, um, okay. Here we have one, and here we have the other. Not bad. No, not bad at all. I don't like it. Um, oh, oh, yeah, I totally forgot. Um, in order to, in order to have. Uh, let's see, what is it? Hmm. Oh, damn. Sometimes uh, uh, when the level starts, there was one thing that I wanted to do. I wanted to have a random uh, chance of it raining outside. Hmm. Right? So, I mean, I actually have... Updating Steam information, of course. Uh, so, I actually have the SPR... rain I have this sprite for the rain I showed it to you right over here David show me that. okay so that <clears throat> as you can see has the rain and it has the little yeah the drop one Stop it. I'm just looking if this thing is the 
This thing has got to be perfectly looped. Why don't you check in the game itself? Well, I'm checking it in the uh, in the thing. I'm checking it in the sprite view right here. So there's a little glitch in there that takes place, and the thing yeah, is, I see that. Look at you can see the loop. Yeah. And the thing is, I had the loop done perfectly, so I don't know why the hell it's not working right now. So I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to actually go into. Here's the rain. I'm gonna have to go into the actual rain thing. Unless there is a way of seeing. I had it perfectly looped in After Effects. Um, and I did it by just cutting the thing in half and just playing with transparency. Um, so it should be perfectly looped. I'm not sure why it's not. Just gonna have to figure this out. Okay. Come on. I mean, if not, maybe I've deleted a bunch of uh, sprites. Yeah, it's definitely like messed up. So I don't even know how the hell did I manage to synchronize that stuff perfectly last time. Oh well, we'll just open up the damn thing in a second. Get the stuff figured out. Come on, After Effects. Work. You little bitch. Wake. Oh, uh, disk cache folder doesn't exist. Okay, well, fuck you too. Some of this stuff takes a while. This is where having a lot of RAM really comes in handy. Because having, like, Game Maker open, Photoshop open, After Effects open, that's all in the memory. Mm -hmm. uh, I had I used to have 4 gigs of RAM. Uh, and I would have to re restart my computer about th every three hours when I was working in Unreal Engine and Maya. Uh, because both of those are really hefty programs that load most of their stuff in the RAM, so it was kind of fucked up. Yes, 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 yes. Come on. Fuck off. Son of a bitch. Never again. Oh, you little shit. You little shit. There could be kids watching, you know. Hey kids, this is what you have to look forward to, you little shits. <laughs> Uncle Mario <sighs> advises. Ah, oh, boy. No editing. No editing. This is what you have to look forward to. It's part of the lesson. This is what you have to put up with. Well, why is it doing that? Because it's a piece of garbage. There we go. All right. He's loading up, probably. Here we go. Okay, so what do we have here? Um, let's go at half frame or full frame. Oh yeah, this is like an older version of the project. Yep. Okay, here are the drops, and that's no, that's just the drop. It's it looks looped in here. No, <laughs> never mind. Um, okay, so this here's here's how you go about. 
here's how you go about making this stuff. So you crop, what is this? That's the window, the backdrop. So you take all of this, you crop it. Then the thing that you need to multi, actually no, this is what you have to do. Select everything. This composition one, that was just the thing. Uh, you have to take all of your content, pre-compose all of your content. So that's, it's a one big piece of garbage. Then you go in the center and then you split it. Then, then you have to move this to the front and move this to the very end. So logically, this end is now beginning of this. So if I do that, this is now the break. This is technically now the end of the animation. So will you stop shaking? No. My god. I got the shakes. From what? From being bored. Thanks. Okay, so put two key frame, uh, blah, 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 two key frames at the end. Um, so this needs to be zero, and so that needs to fade in, or this this needs to fade in. And that one needs to fade out. So, like that, which means. Oh, I saw a glitch. You just gotta load it up. All right. All right, that's better. So it's a little bit better. It's probably gonna be even better if you just extend the amount of fade so that it wouldn't be so apparent. You can kind of see the doubling, but it's still looping around. You can't really, no, I don't notice it much. Yeah. I mean, if anything, you just, you know, extend, like, the fuck out of it. And just make it a part of the, uh, part of the attraction. Mm, and I just gotta make sure that it's actually loaded up. Yeah, we're good. Mm, pretty good. You know what, come to think of it. Okay, so this one's done. I can actually save this. In fact, I'm gonna save it as a separate. Rain converted. Thank you very much. After Effects. As far as I know, I think I was just playing back the rain animation at a much faster rate. Back here. Okay, so I mean, that's done. Um, all I have to do is I have to create a global variable called global dot rain equals true and only if global dot rain equals true will there be rain so in the window right after the background we gotta draw the rain draw sprite extended SPR rain now I haven't imported or I haven't rendered the old rain yet or the new rain yet I still want to try out this one because as far as I remember I didn't have to do shit in the old uh, in the older project so yeah uh, now when it comes to the speed see this is where I think I just increased the speed of the animation to the point where you couldn't really even tell that it was like glitching so rain speed equals or I should say rain frame equals uh, 1.5 um, well, although in that case it's just gonna skip the frame ah fuck it let's just do that or it has to be at zero but we're gonna add 1.5 or 2 to it. 
So the frame will be rain frame uh, x, y, uh, 3, 3, rotation of 0, c, white, and alpha of 1. Okay, so rain frame plus equals, let's do 2, just for shits and giggles. Uh, how many frames do I have here? 79, so that's 78, so I'm from 0 to 78. Uh, if rain frame is above 78, then rain frame is equals to 0, so that it loops around. All right. See if this some bitch works. Game dev. Yep. All right. I see it. All right. So we have something that's sort of kind of working. I'd say it's too fast, man. Just a little bit. Uh, it's also <laughs> not in the right place. Okay, so all I have to do is scale this thing a bit. So it's not right at the center. I'd say 2, 2, and uh, like maybe 1.5. Or even like 1.2. Okay. Okay, here we go. We're getting there. Yeah, that's better. Still a little up too high, though. Yeah. By a few pixels. Well, I mean, too high as in, I gotta put it down, plus four. Considering that we doubled the scale of the resolution, every one pixel that it shows up there is two pixels on the screen, yeah. right? That's one thing you have to worry about. Um, when I said uh, that if you don't scale your project properly, if you don't scale your game properly in the game engine, you were going to get black borders. That actually applies a lot more to tiles, like transparent tiles, than it does to sprites. Uh, it can still apply to sprites. So, all right, so that's working pretty good. I just need to move it down two and then left two. Um, so minus four and plus eight. Considering every two pixels is, you know, or every pixel is doubled up, so because we stretch the application surface twice the size. Or we're stretching everything. Okay, here we go. Hey, That's look good. at that. Everything's in there. Now, the one thing I had in the... Actually, I can see that it's, uh, it's kind of sticking out right over there. Uh, so I'm going to need to just stretch it on, along the x-axis just a tiny bit, like 2.2 perhaps. And there's one more thing that I did. I actually had the raindrops um, shadowed in the lighting. So if there was rain and the, sh the light from the moon was hitting the floor, you would see raindrops in there too. All right, that looks good. Nothing else. So this light right here would also have, um, would also have the raindrops show up in there. And I think it did that just by simply stretching the sprite, uh, yeah, just by simply stretching the sprite. Now, this is where you have, whew, this is where playing with the, with the second surface would come in handy because uh, I can deal with the player uh, being behind the light, considering you can see the light right on top of his feet. Uh, and at the same time, uh, the way it works is that you, you create a blank surface and you use the player sprite to add it to the surface. 
and then you use that surface to subtract um, the darkness from the other surface. So there's like juggling of surfaces going on here. Um, I just got to wrap my head around the way I did that in the first project. So I inverted the sprite. Um, I had the second surface. Or not even. I know what I did. Okay, I know what I did. Um, I had a blank blank surface so here's what I'm gonna do I have to go to the object lighting create event I have to create a second surface so this is um, masks uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing so since I've created the second service I'm gonna need to also check that it exists now I'm gonna go and set the masks surface as a target and then inside of the mask surface inside of the mask surface I'm going to first of all let's deal with the player popping up inside of the uh, inside of the thing so first I would add yes so first I would actually add the light not the players light but I would add the ooh son of a bitch What was it? What was the order at which I tossed the surfaces around? Left drape, right drape. Okay, so this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to toss instead of the this stuff. First, I'm going to draw the drape lights to the mask surface with the regular thing. Then... I also need to make sure that I clear it, clear the surface with a clear color. Then I draw the light sprites that are supposed to be subtracted from the darkness to the mask surface. And then I have to subtract the shape of the player sprite from that, which means that with player object, I once again will have to draw all the things that I drew for the body. So the head, the candle, the body has to be drawn here. So that will subtract that will subtract that from the lights which means that now in here instead of actually drawing the window light I will have to draw surface uh, and I will have to draw surface mask and it will have to be drawn at 0.0, .0 coordinates now when you get to stuff like drawing surfaces within surfaces that's when you get like the really finicky stuff with the coordinates considering that surfaces everything is drawn at from the relative position uh, in the room but uh, since surfaces move around I know you're probably not gonna understand anything I'm saying and we get an error why uh, orientation uh, orientation with object player oh that's right Okay, so we need to actually create, we're trying to access once again a variable that we have not declared, that we declared in the middle, in the middle of the game, or in the middle of the code. 
I kind of have to do it here. I'm pretty sure I'm going to get another error about candle position X, Y, and the candle size. Most likely. Yep. Candle. Look angle 2, which is located right over there. So I got to see, you got to declare all of these variables. Considering that uh, this lighting script is trying to access the variables that have not been created yet. So this is why you need to declare all of these fucking things in the create event. If you're like making some temporary variables, uh, then you know for sure you're not going to be using anywhere outside of that object, then you can get away with it. But in this case, I really have to declare everything. Declare your variable, kids. Here we go. Okay, so. Okay, so you see how I'm subtracting. I'm sort of subtracting my myself from the light down below. So it's working, I just gotta displace it properly. player displace X displace Y oh that's where it is look angle displace X displace Y just need to create these damn variables orientation and that's fine So much shit you gotta do to get the stuff working. Uh, I will probably need two. See, now we get to the point where we need to subtract the views from all of the X positions and all of the Y positions. I mean, this is the kind of, like, when you get into lighting for your game, you'll kind of just have to figure this out once. And, uh... After that is just common sense. Come on, you can do this. It's a one tiny effect, but it looks so good. Just simply Oh look at that. Look at that. Nice. Your body is no longer behind oh Except for that, but you know, your body is no longer uh, behind the lighting. But you see what I'm talking about with the little outline, right? You're gonna have to make that outline follow your head as well, then. Eh? Yes. Well, uh, it's the angle of the sprite for some reason it's not being read, and so is you know the opposite side. I gotta displace that thing. But. Um, you can see, you know, right there, the, at least on the feet, there's a white outline uh, taking place. This was way more drastic and way more um, extreme when I was working on a smaller resolution. Because it had to, like, let me fix the head tilt, not following the, the head. And you'll see what I'm talking about, when the, how the surfaces pixelate everything. I just have to actually get this look angle look angle to work here the body the hand and the head so the look angle for some reason the look angle does not follow follow this stuff so the only thing that I can think of is that I need to make the look angle take place in the step event instead of the draw event. That is the only thing that I can think of. So where do we have the look look angle? Here we go. So we're just drawing the stuff here and I can take this 
and move it into the step event. So walk, camera, go for head and hand. Because uh, if you follow the order at which the code executes, the step event, step begins, step, end step, and the step event take place before the draw event, as far as I know. Yes. So I'm thinking almost <laughs> what if only that actually worked. So now I need to figure out why it's not running at all. If orientation Unless there's more than one place where I'm actually declaring this stuff. Uh, scripts, search and scripts. All right. Look, angle equals zero. Player create event. Oh, that's why. I think. Because I was redeclaring the variables with a var in um, in front of the variable. Huh, well, until you actually find this stuff. Beautiful. Okay. Here we go. Look at that. It's working. So the problem was, um, I copied the variable into the create event right uh the problem was that in here i was actually typing var orientation so i redeclared the the variable uh in the step event which cleared its previous um value from the memory so it's actually working just fine now So I had one in the in the create event which declared that this variable exists, and then I had var orientation in the step event which redeclared it and automatically cleared everything that was in there before. So as you can see, we now have our you know son of a bitch right on top of there. Now the only thing I have left to do is basically just add the rain into the same surface as uh, as the what uh, to the mask as what I just did so the same mask I'm using to subtract the player from the lighting to make sure that he doesn't appear uh, behind the lighting uh, I am doing this right here so all I have to do is say if global or not here. I have to do this right over here after I have um, drawn the light. So this is the mask of the player's body that I have to subtract from the light. Uh, so in between here I have to say if uh, rain or global dot rain equals true then we can draw sprite extended SPR rain uh, now where are we drawing this stuff in the first place in the window that's right okay so uh, I can go ahead and just say with uh, OBJ decor window and I'm gonna basically draw the rain sprite again on behalf of this object um, so if global rain is equals to true, uh, rain frame, considering that we're now using the variables located in this object. Um, whoops. Uh, so now this is this is the tricky part. Uh, we have x, y. Now x scale definitely shouldn't be the same. 
uh, if we multiplied it by 3, I'd say maybe we can do like 1.5. And y should be, or y should be 1.5. So it's compressed, but width should be still 3. And uh, then rotation 0, c white for color, and then alpha is 1. So now this once again just compiling and moving some stuff around. Um, and uh, switching the orientation for the rain. All right. Okay, almost. So we can see the rain is right over here. Uh, so let's go ahead and drop it down even more. In fact, we also have to subtract the X view and Y view from the X and Y position. This is where the power of your processor comes in handy, so you don't have to recompile this shit over and over again. Okay, so where's the light? It's right over here. Good. Uh, so now we can go ahead and add maybe like 60 to it. Okay. Okay, so almost. It's being dropped, that's for sure, but it's got to be more extreme, like 200 points. 200 pixels. 200 points. <laughs> oh boy. It is a game. You could measure everything in points. Okay. Hey, look at that. There you go. Now, the only thing is that it's the rain in the shadow is moving in the wrong direction. We have to flip it. Right? Make sense? No. Like, if the droplet goes from here to here, this is the top corner here. This is the top corner sure. here. So oh, okay. it has to go over here. Right. That's why we need to actually flip uh, the Y coordinates. So we need to just say minus 1.5. I think. I hope. <clears throat> okay. There we go. So this is making more sense. The only thing is I, I just gotta adjust the scale. Maybe do like 1.1 1 .1 or just 1. Um, because it's kind of hitting the, the wall there where the light is not as prominent, where the ambient light is only spreading. Okay. There we go. Almost. We still have a little bit of the rain coming from over there. In fact, I don't think the orientation is correct. Um, I think I should also invert... Oh, whoops, I forgot. <laughs> I deleted the negative. Uh, so I should also squish the x-axis a little bit. Come on, damn it. Hey, look at that. Looking shakshay. I still see a little bit of rain over there. So that's along the y-axis, so 0 0.5. Let's go to a nice extreme, see if that's too small. But once again, this is fine tuning stuff. Not bad. Mm -hmm. That works. Yeah. The only thing is that the rain seems a little too small um, and it just doesn't look too proportionate so I'd say I can actually get back to about maybe two and just drop the uh, the rain itself below the room scale 
believe it or not, with the first version of the game, I, I was actually saving the entire configuration of each room randomly generated into like a, a data structure. Mm. And uh, so each room had a number of uh, furniture pieces and a number of windows and a number of paintings. And it would save how many of e each item there is or there are into a basically an array their positions x y coordinates their like random configurations if there were, were any and it would save them for each uh it would basically basically generate the entire building there were like seven floors and each had 20 rooms in it hmm. right so it would save the entire building and uh just load up floor by floor if you went a floor up upstairs then it would load up the the floor it would basically delete everything in the room and it would regenerate all of the items in that floor. Mm. That was a goddamn insane, insane thing to do. <laughs> Can't believe I've done that. Wasted so much time. That's how you learn. Yeah, pretty much. I'm probably going to make a lot of mistakes as well. A yeah. lot of time wasters. Yeah, that's how you learn. Yep. <laughs> Almost. A little too far. 280. That was just waiting for compile time. <laughs> Alright, almost. I'd say maybe... 260. Here we go. That looks good. So now, uh, what was it? Interface? Mm. Inventory. Mm. Right? Gotcha. You're like, <sighs> I'm like, uh, basically. It's, been, it's, it's so different being in the passenger seat. Because when you're actually doing it, like your mind's active, but when you're sitting down, you're just like, uh, yeah. When you're observing. Pretty much. Well, I mean, we've covered pretty much most of the stuff. Yeah. I mean, we've covered, like, you know, surfaces, the working with surfaces. And I've even covered, like, an advanced working with the surface within the surface type of thing where, you know, you just cut out the shape of the player from inside of the, uh, inside of the room or inside of the surface. God damn. Yeah, that's a lot of work. <laughs> it is. It truly really is. I can't believe that I've actually done that in like what six hours plus to yesterday's plus yesterday's yeah those are like eight it must have been about ten hours just about around yeah and there's no game jam plus you're not adding the part the time it took you to make the assets yeah that is true actually I was thinking I'm like this is taking forever and he hasn't even like actually done the assets yeah the assets are all pre-made yeah. this is kind of the thing where you have to plan things ahead though this is why you don't wing a project. You gotta write a script. You gotta make a list of all the assets you need for the script or for the game. Draw all of your assets first and then, and then get to programming. Exactly, yeah. Right? Funny thing is music is actually one of the last parts in game development and even like movie production. Yeah. You write music to, to a complete see, project. Yeah. yeah, to what you see. There's like like it usually depends on which project it is i mean sometimes if it's just atmospheric they just provide you with concept art and you just write music for that yeah. if it's more cinematic like there's cut scenes or there's things that queue up with the events in the game mm -hmm. that's when you you have to write stuff you know <sighs> based on the cut scenes god damn i'm tired too <laughs> i think i'm gonna call it a day all right sounds good so this is where we are at i mean Judging from the stuff that we've already done, I mean, you can kind of come up with a way of making NPCs and enemies. Yeah. Right? I mean, most of the stuff covered here, you can already learn. This is way. all the, uh, I'd say the hardest, harder parts, but also the AI, I guess I'd have to Well, I mean, the, the AI is, it, there's not a lot of AI, to be honest. There's just 
if statements, like if you're close to the player, run towards the player. Yeah, true. Right? Anyways, all right, so we are both beat, and uh, hopefully you guys have learned something from this tutorial. <laughs> I know I did. God, I gotta, like, get some people on this stuff. <laughs> Make a dev, dev team. Maybe one of your YouTube guys could be part of your dev team. You can have, like, a... Maybe. A long-distance development team thing. This <laughs> is a long-distance development relationship. <laughs> Uh, Jesus. Get in there. Yeah, see, I gotta, like... And you've also got that. Well, that is... That is as simple as just... Going into the lighting and, uh... Saying, if you're in the closet, don't do any of this shit. <laughs> we'll come out of the closet. Oh, ho, ho.